Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, and thank you all very much for joining us in this video. We thank you for taking the time to view us. Uh, we know you could have been viewing anybody else in the world, but you decided to come and watch this video. So thank you very much for doing that. And I hope it is a blessing uh, for you as you watch through what we will be discussing today. So we're going to uh, take a few moments to kind of just think about uh, the word of God and his promises and his faithfulness. I want us to look at a passage that's very familiar. We've heard this passage several times before. We read it many times before. We know it. Uh, but sometimes it's good to have a refresher. So I want to take a few moments to look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 8 through verse number 10. And I'm going to read these passages through the, uh, from the New Living Translation. And I would encourage you to read from whatever translation you would prefer. All right. But I want you to read along with me. It says it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And even when he had reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. These are powerful words, and I want to use these words to focus on the topic, the road less traveled. All right. The road less traveled. All of us in our lives, we are entering into a journey. Some of us are already on that journey. Some of us have not yet started the journey. But the truth is, life is a journey. The life that God has appointed for us and the life that we have to discover that has been appointed by God is all about taking a journey. It is a path that leads us into the fulfillment of where God wants us to be. And the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, is that journey sometimes is one of the most difficult paths that we could ever take. However, it is absolutely essential. I was just reading through the book of Jonah today, and um, the book of Jonah is very interesting because it gives us an example of what uh, happens to a person that desires to take a different path than the one that God has appointed. And the interesting thing about that is none of us get to uh, to escape the path. Whenever you're called by God to do something spectacular, you, you can't escape the path. You have to get where God wants you to be because he has called you, he has chosen you to do something. However, the, the interesting thing about that is how we get there is all up to us. So that's the interesting thing about taking the journey and the walk of faith uh, with God. And Abraham was the individual that was called to do something. He was appointed by God to serve a significant role in the universal plan of God. And he could not escape that. And the reason why he is deemed the father of faith is because while he could have taken all sorts of paths to get there, he takes the path that gets him where God wants him to be. And he takes a path that is more beneficial to him. And it is rewarding along the way in many ways that it would not have been if he would have been hostile uh, to the will and intentions of God. So we have a way of comparing perhaps Abraham to Jonah, whereas Jonah gets to where God needs him to be in a very confrontational way. Abraham he goes to the place where God wants him to be, and God is continuously providing for him. He is completely submissive to the will of God. Every step of the way, he's doing exactly what God wants him to do. And God not only rewards him for that, but he also rewards his children. All right. So I want us to think about how we should model our, model our lives uh, after the example of Abraham, because that is how we get blessed along the way. All right. So here it is. We all know the different things that that Abraham received. He received the child from his uh, his wife, who was well beyond age, and he becomes a seed of uh, of the covenant. and And it goes on and shows over and over again how God continuously pr uh, protects Abraham and provides for him and and multiplies him in many ways uh, throughout his life. But what I want to really talk about today is how did Abraham do it. Because the truth is, brothers and sisters, as we all know, we got to have faith, right? 
But the question is, how do we have faith? What does it take to have faith? And what challenges are there whenever we're trying to live a faithful life? You know, the word faith is not simply uh, the word that means to believe. Uh, we sometimes think that if we have faith, it just simply means we need to believe God can do something. But the word faith in the Greek uh, language means to have trust. And consequently, because you're trusting God, it means that you must be faithful to God. It must it means that you must rely on God and in relying on God, you therefore you trust him in a way that leads you to be faithful. Right. So here it is. Uh, the reason why we can commit to God is because we trust him so strongly to do what he said he'll do. Therefore, we faithfully, we relentlessly pursue the will of God and live that out every day of our lives. Uh, that's what we find in Hebrews chapter 11. And more significantly, that's what we find in the life of Abraham. All right. So here are, I want to give you three things. I want to give you three things that I think will help you understand what Abraham was going through and then what he had to allow him to do the things that he did. Now, there are three things I want to point out that you may be feeling as a result of your faith, because if you look at verse number eight, it says, by faith, Abraham did this, right? So a person with faith with faith, may have these three things going on in their lives that will make them extremely uncomfortable. I want to say this. When you have faith, you live in a very uncomfortable life while you're on the path. And it becomes easy for you to just go and do something else because that feels uh, a lot more comfortable than living in trust to God, right? That's That's the tension that having faith creates for the believer. It's, it's that I could do this. I could go through my life uh, doing this thing and it would be far more comfortable. But if I do it the way God wants me to do it, then I have to submit to a very uncomfortable life because here's the thing, brothers and sisters, we'd rather live life trusting in ourselves than in trusting God. It's more comfortable to us in many instances to trust ourselves because we can see what we've Feel will work for us. But when you're trusting God, you have to do something that Jesus taught his apostles, his disciples to do. You have to live one day at a time, asking the Lord for your daily bread. And you have to live knowing that I know I'm taken care of right now, but I don't always feel comfortable about tomorrow. <laughs> All right. And that is where your faith has to kick in. That's where your trust has to kick in and you have to live life faithfully knowing that just as God took it, has taken care of me today, he will take care of me tomorrow. All right. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. I'm getting a little excited there, but, but this is the thing that I wake up saying every day. I literally wake up saying every day, give us today, Lord, our daily bread. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to worry about itself. I'm going to worry about today. I know that today you have prepared for me all that I need. And whenever tomorrow comes, guess what? You're going to have tomorrow taken care of too. And I believe that's the way Abraham lived his life. But here are three things. And I keep saying, talking about these three things. Let me finally give it to you. The first thing is whenever you're living a life of faith, you will feel like a wanderer. You're going to feel like you're not necessarily doing this, but you're going to feel like you're just wandering around in life. You're just going from place to place. You, you're you just living a life wandering. This is why it says in verse number eight, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. He was just walking. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where the Lord was going to take him. He didn't know where it was, he was going to end up, but because he trusted the Lord, guess what he did? He went wherever, wherever the Lord took him. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have any plans or that you don't have any goals or you're just living life carelessly. That's not at all uh, what the word of God is encouraging us to do. But the word of God is encouraging us to live within a certain uh, uh, perspective that says, I'm completely open right? To where the Lord wants to take me. In other words, don't make your plans so firm 
that whenever God tells you to do something contrary to your plans, you are already hostile to what the Lord has said. And it leads you to do something other than what the Lord is demanding that you do in that moment. In other words, make yourself fragile, make yourself uh, 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 vulnerable to where the Lord wants to take you. Because at any moment, the Lord may tell you, this is where I want you to go. And you all know how we are. You know how we are. Sometimes we sit there and we say, Lord, but I wanted to do this. Lord, I wanted to go here. And sometimes what God does, like he did with Abraham, is he calls us out of that thing. And that calling out becomes one of the most frustrating, one of the most uncomfortable things you could ever do. But I'm here to tell you, I'm a witness to this, brothers and sisters, that if you follow the Lord where he wants you to go, when you get where you're going, brothers and sisters, you're going to find out that where the Lord was taking you is much more and much better than where you was trying to get, where you were trying to get on your own. All right. So you have to, you have to be fragile. All right. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to be a wanderer. Many people may look at you and say, you don't know what you want to do. You don't know how you want to, how you want to go in life. You're just all over the place. You ever heard anybody say that? Well, here it is, brothers and sisters. That's what happens with a person with faith because a person with faith understands I'm not living according to my own intents and desires. I'm being led wherever the Lord will take me. And sometimes, sometimes that looks like a person who is just wandering all over the place. All right. All right. So the second thing I want to show you is sometimes you will see what belongs to you in the hands of of someone else. All right, I'll say that again. You will see what belongs to you <laughs> in the hands of somebody else. <laughs> now, brothers and sisters, what happens whenever we see our blessing in the hands of somebody else? Well, what we tend to do is we tend to try to go and take it, right? We try to go and take it. But faith says, let them keep it until the Lord decides to hand it over to you. I want to show you this. Verse number nine says, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. Notice the land of promise was already there. He is there wandering in the land that will become his, but it's for the moment it is possessed by other people. Yet the Lord tells him to go and sojourn in a land that will be yours, but now belongs for the moment to somebody else. All right. One of the greatest challenges that you will have to do in your life is you will have to watch other people enjoy the blessings that will ultimately be yours. <laughs> you got to sit back and watch people hold on to something temporarily that the Lord has promised to give you eternally. All right. And that sometimes is uncomfortable. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, you have to go to work. You have to wake up every morning and watch people hold on to things that you will ultimately be given. And the challenge becomes, because you're walking by faith, is to not go and try to snatch it out of their hands and take what ultimately belongs to you before the time that God has designated for you to have it. All right? This is what faith is all about. Faith is saying, I trust that the Lord's timing is better than my timing. I trust that the Lord's blessings come in the time appointed by God rather than demanding that it comes a moment earlier. All right. This is what it means to be faithful. This is what it means to live by faith. I can imagine uh, uh, Abraham walking around that land. Right. And everybody is policing the area and holding on to the area as if it is their land and as if they're going to have it forever. And here it is. Abraham has this promise from the Lord. And because he is walking by faith, he also has the discipline to be patient. All right. Uh, there's an old song that says he may not come when you want him, <laughs> but he's always on time. Right. But I, I want to I want you to understand that when you have faith, it causes you to also have patience because you're not living by just the simple fact that God can do it. You're living by the fact that God will do it as long as I trust him to do it in the time that he has already appointed, all right? So th that's an important piece that you have to keep in mind 
All right. While you are waiting on the Lord to do what you're going, uh, what he's going to do for you. And while you're walking by faith, remember, sometimes the blessing is yours, but you can't have it right now. <laughs> All right. You got to wander. You have to sojourn around and among the blessing that the Lord will give you. All right. And do that with joy. Don't be uh, 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 discontent. Allow the Lord to make his way uh, uh, in your life and allow him rather to bring up to pass that promise in his own timing. That's when the true reward will come. All right. The last thing, the third thing is that life will feel unstable and sometimes you will feel unsettled. Right. I want you to notice what he says here in verse number nine. It says, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Look at this point. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Imagine, you know, having your family, having responsibilities and you cannot make a permanent home for your family because you're living by faith, knowing that God has appointed a time to give you what he has promised. Feel, imagine how Abraham must have felt, must have felt. Imagine how he must have felt never having a permanent residence, but always going from place to place and not just going from place to place on his own, but now taking his family and setting up a tent here and setting up a tent there and putting a tent here and doing that his entire life. And brothers and sisters, I take away from this text the fact that sometimes when you're walking in faith, you will always feel unsettled. You will never feel like you are in a stable place in life. It's okay. It's okay, brothers and sisters, because we're living by faith and we're on a journey. And the truth of the matter is the temptation is always there to get off of the path that God has assigned for your life and, uh, and accept the path that makes you feel more what? settled, more stable. It's all about feeling comfortable and we don't like being uncomfortable. So we'll take that path in our lives that says it makes me more stable. It makes me feel more settled. But the truth of the matter is, brother and sister, you are never stable. You're never, never settled until you learn to live by faith because your life is stabilized and it is it is settled by God, not by your own efforts or what you can do for yourself. You know, we live in a very postmodern world that teaches us that we ought to grab life by the horns and make the best of it. Well, Christians believe this. The Christian worldview says, grab God and let him make your life what it needs to be. Grab a hold to the will of God. This is what Jesus teaches in Matthew 6, 33. Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. And that is grab a hold to God and let him make the best of your life. And when we do that, then that's when we find life being more fulfilling and more rewarding because we are living according to the will of God. Now, here's the interesting thing about all of this. This is easy to say, right? Do this, do this, do this. But what made Abraham do this? Many people believe in a, a, Juda, a, a Judaic uh, a, a tradition that that Abraham had a vision of God. He had a vision of what the promise was like and what it looked like. And his vision of the promise superseded any material or earthly uh, uh, capacity. Rather, it was this supernatural, immortal existence to which he looked for and anticipated receiving. In other words, he looked beyond the temporal things and he saw how what God was promising him was eternal. It was something that would transcend this earthly capacity. And he gr he grabbed it by the hands and he fastened himself to it and said, this thing that the Lord has promised in me is far better than anything I could ever receive on this earth. Well, th th that is that is beautiful. I believe there's some merit to that. But when it's all said and done, I believe that the reason why Abraham was able to commit to this lifestyle is because he had hope. Hope is very powerful. And I believe that if you really have faith, you will have hope. Here's the way I like to say it. Faith sets you out on the journey, but hope is what keeps you on the path. 
Faith will compel you to leave. But hope is what keeps you going after you have left. And I want you to see what verse number nine says. It says, he looked for a city which have foundations whose builder and maker is God. In other words, even though he couldn't see the city, he by faith knew the city existed. But because he had faith, he had also hope that one day he would actually get the city that he believed truly existed. Brothers and sisters, I want you now to understand that if you have faith, you must also have hope. You must also believe that not only does the thing that God promised me exist, but I believe that I will get the thing that God has promised me. And if you can go through life with that sort of hope, with that sort of belief, brothers and sisters, not only will you get the thing that God has promised you, but on the way to that thing, life will be all the more fulfilling and rewarding. I was sharing this with someone. I want you to think about life this way. I want you to live your life believing in God so strongly that he will do what he said he will do. And I want you to believe that that thing that God has promised you is so worth your time that even though the road is difficult, even though you seem like or feel like you are traveling down a road that is getting you nowhere, even though you feel like you're wandering through life, I want you to do this. I want you to smile through the trials, smile through the disappointments, smile, smile through the heartaches, knowing that whenever you actually get where God is taking you, it's going to be far more worth anything you have ever gone through to get there. All right. Paul talks about this on several occasions. He talks about how how difficult life is. But knowing that when I get where God has uh, planned for me to be, it's going to be so much worth anything that I've ever endured right here in this temporary state. All right. So God has some things, some things uh, lined up for us. Put your feelings to the side, not saying that your, your feelings are not real, but, but understand that your feelings is just that it's just a feeling and your reality trumps anything that you're feeling in the moment. All right. So I thank thank you for watching. I thank God for this record. It's such a beautiful account of what Abraham was able to do. And I believe as believers, we have the ability through the Holy Spirit to do the same thing. I want to encourage you to truly believe, all right? Truly have faith and have hope, all right? And allow that to be your motivation throughout this journey, all right? Thank you very much for watching. I pray that you have a blessed week. I hope that all of your wishes and all of your dreams come true according to the will of the Lord. And I will see you in the next week video. Until then, take care and God bless.